right, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. So we are going to be working on chapter six. And yes, I'm sure I say this about all the chapters, but chapter six is one of my favorites. And why? Because of fallacies. Okay, so fallacies are great to know. All right, and the reason for that is people like to use fallacies when they don't really have a point to make, and they just kind of want to deceive to some extent, right? So you'll see politicians do this, lawyers do this, advertisement companies do this, and it's just a way of manipulating the conversation to get what they want, all right? So we do it all the time. I'm sure as children we've done it, as adults we do it. A lot of times we do this without realizing we're doing it. So what's really cool about fallacies is once you see them, you can't unsee them, all right? Um, yeah, so let's get started. On chapter six, you're gonna see um, at the tops of some of these pages, maybe even on the bottom, you're gonna see what's called the reminder. I want you to do the reminder so that way you can have a practical application for these fallacies so that you feel comfortable using them because we are gonna be using them for our advertisement project, which I'm very excited about. Every semester they turn out really cool, so I'm really excited to see what you come up with. Again, once you see these fallacies, you're gonna catch things so quick. You're like, oh, I see what you're doing there, man. Like, really kind of wakes you up to see uh, maybe even ways that you're using them too, okay? So there's actually two kind of different categories of the types of fallacies that are used. There's a ton of fallacies. We're gonna be using um, kind of like a handful of them. Usually the most, um, you know, commonly used type of fallacies. Um, there's a lot of different ones and some are a little bit similar, but we're just going to kind of focus on these uh, for this particular chapter. You are free to go down the rabbit hole of all the fallacies you want, <laughs> um, but for this uh, particular chapter, we're just going to be covering just a handful. So the very first category that we're going to be covering is called inadequate reasonings, uh, reasons, right? The type of fallacies that they, that somebody will use because they have a very inadequate reason. All right, again, this is for somebody who is trying to make an argument but doesn't really have an argument, so they use a fallacy to kind of cover that up, okay? And then we have another category of fallacies, and those are the fallacies that are used to mislead you. And again, of course, those are gonna be politicians and advertisers, you know, that kind of thing. So just really cool things to be mindful of and really kind of understand, like, how are we utilizing our, our dialogue to manipulate people, whether intentional, which is usually the case, or sometimes unintentional. We don't realize we're really doing it until we get caught up in it. Okay. So, uh, reasoning errors. So reasoning errors, those are also known as fallacies. Um, and fallacies are errors in reasoning, um, that we use and we use them in a couple different ways. So one way of using, um, having errors in reasoning would be the reasons seem logical, but they don't necessarily support the conclusion. Remember when I had the syllogism and we had our reason and then we had our conclusion. Well, with fallacies, the reasons, you know, they, they seem logical together, but in the end, they don't actually support the conclusion. So that's how you, they, you know, a fallacy will get you because you're like, oh, the reasons seem logical. Therefore, the conclusion should be, it doesn't seem right, but you believe it, right? That's how fallacies end up working. Another one is that statements, the statements are used to distract the, the listener or the reader from the actual issue itself, okay? So a fallacy can be a statement that's just distracting you from what's, you know, what the real issue is. And I'm gonna show you a few examples as we move forward. So the types of fallacies that are considered inadequate reasons are going to be the false, uh, faulty analogies, false cause, slippery slope, straw man, hasty conclusion, uh, false dilemma, and then begging the question. And some of these sound familiar because you noticed earlier in the semester, I actually covered about four of them. And again, the point of that was really just to get your feet wet and to understand uh, what the fallacies are and how you will be looking at them and maybe even utilizing them too within a project or an assignment, okay? Um, I didn't cover all of them. You notice it did kind of stop. Here in chapter six, I'm pretty much going to consolidate, put them all together, and really give you um, the nitty gritty of them. The book itself does an incredible job of doing that, so please read this chapter to really understand uh, the details of it that maybe I might not cover as thoroughly in this particular lecture for some reason. Okay, so the first one is faulty or false analogies. 
And a false analogy occurs when you compare two things that are not really alike. Okay, we talked about this in my other videos. You can go back and read those. So I'm going to click through the comics quickly. All right, so an example would be uh, anti-smoking laws don't work uh, because they're just like prohibition laws in the 1920s. And we know that the prohibition laws uh, in the 1920s did not work. So they're trying to compare two things that are like, but they actually are not. Okay, uh, go ahead, click through the comics. I, you can pause me and go through it. Again, I kind of already did it in the other video, um, but I'm going to get to a little bit more detail in this false analogy that the book covers a bit better. So on page 226, I'm going to get there because I got my handy dandy book with me. On 226, it does this uh, analogy talking about um, spring soft fabric softener and comparing it to an experience. So um, a, a false analogy or a faulty analogy would be comparing, again, a product to an experience. And you can see how a lot of times that uh, commercials or advertisements do this. So spring soft fabric is, is putting out this claim saying that, you know, spring soft fabric smells great. It's like hanging your clothes in the fresh air. So using this product is like this. All right, so we're gonna actually compare spring soft versus actual fresh air. What are some pros, what are some cons? And uh, is there actual uh, statement? Is it something that we can say, you're right. All right, so spring soft, one of their first things is that their smell is actually induced by chemicals. Okay, so they're saying it's like hanging it out in the fresh air, but really their scent is chemical induced. Well, fresh air, you go hang your clothes out on a clothesline, it smells like fresh air because it's fresh air, okay? Now, Spring Soft uh, is also a product, so that means as a product and you need it, you gotta keep ordering it or purchasing it, it's, so it has a reoccurring cost to it. But if you were to hang your clothes out on the actual fresh air, it's a one-time clothesline cost, done, all right? So there we go, there's how you can say, well, they're not really the same. Though Spring Soft, in the fact that you use a dryer, because it is a dryer sheet, your clothes get done a lot quicker. You're like, well, actually, you know, well, it's maybe not true fresh air, but it dries my, my clothes a little quicker. Well, fresh air, it's time consuming. So you see how they really are not the same at all. <laughs> okay, but Spring Soft's trying to compare the two to make a point, so you buy their product. And maybe do, maybe don't. All right. So a false analogy, <clears throat> I'm gonna give you a couple more examples where, I've gotten this one, I've heard this a few times, especially when it comes to video games and TV shows that are out and about, where it says, I've watched television all my life and I turned out just fine. Well, 20 to 30 years ago, there was a lot of different you know, programs in society and, and video games have changed. And I'll be honest, if you look back 20, 30 years ago, some of the stuff that are, you know, was out on TV was pretty racist and, and, and inappropriate. If you've ever seen some Gumby or, or Bugs Bunny, Gumby, does anyone know what that is? The little green guy with the purple or the red horse? No, okay. Oh, man, I aged myself there. <laughs> okay, so uh, that and Bugs Bunny, some of these shows were incredibly racist. And Dr. Seuss just recently, a lot of his books were pulled you know, because of the dialogue that they were using, incredibly inappropriate. Hell, even 10, 15 years ago, some of the stuff that we saw were misogynistic, just absolute garbage, to be honest with you, because it was very, you know, chauvinistic and just inappropriate. But as we move forward, we're starting to go, wow, that's, that's some bad dialogue. That made some people really, you know, uncomfortable and feeling unsafe. Maybe we should not be promoting this. That's 20 and 30 years ago. Imagine it was even worse. So... Long story short, while you think you might have turned out just fine, I think that uh, that's it's a completely different world that we're living in. So to compare the two is not even the same. Hell, I think TV shows and things now are really getting a lot better than <laughs> what they used to be, even though I watch Golden Girls all the time. But they were way ahead of their time. So I'm just going to say that. Okay. All right. So again, things have changed over time. So to compare the two is just completely a, you know, a faulty analogy there. Okay. Keep that in mind. All right. So I didn't have to study or uh, take that many notes and I got an A. You know, we're talking about a class. I got an A. How did you not get an A? Well, what's you're comparing two different things. Maybe the A you got a class in, you just have to be proficient in, whether it was math or science or English. Maybe you just happen to have prior experience, a different teacher that gave you a little something extra or whatever. You getting that A is not comparable to someone else, you know, n not getting the A or whatever. Maybe they needed to take notes um, and they didn't, you know. So 
That being the case, so not accounting for previous knowledge and abilities, comparing it to another person, like that becomes a false knowledge. You cannot compare the two because it's two different people. Everybody learns differently. Okay. So when someone is supporting a position by, you know, comparing one idea, situation, uh, or plan or whatever to another, um, you have to stop and evaluate what are they comparing. Always, whenever you see one thing trying to be compared to another, they kind of seem like they're alike, but they aren't. Make sure you're aware of that um, because you really want to be able to say, man, that is not even close. You know, and I, I think I, I told you before the argument about the BLM um, riots versus the Capitol riots, and you can't compare to the two. You can't because they're literally two different situations. And if you put them next to each other and you see the line across, you can look at it and go, these are not even the same thing. So this is where we have a completely faulty analogy that people will do that to try and make their point. Okay, because remember, they have an inadequate reason for the statement that they're trying to make, and they're just kind of pulling stuff out. Well, it's just like this. It's not. Okay. All right. So post hoc ergo propter hoc um, is, again, one of my favorites. Again, I have a video on this one, too, but I'm going to kind of cut past the uh, comics and give you the nitty gritty here. Um, so the idea is after the fact, therefore, because of the fact. It's, it's the idea that... Um, there's a there's a false cause effect, all right? Assuming that since one thing happened first, that it caused the next thing to happen, okay? So you won the lottery because you found a quote unquote lucky horseshoe in the morning. Uh, <laughs> correlation does not mean causation. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. So we're gonna skip through the comics here. Okay, so false cause occurs when um, there's no real proof uh, that one event caused another event. Okay, so the false causes, just because this happened doesn't mean this happened. And the only evidence is that one occurred after the other. Just because this happened does not mean that happened, right? So correlation, things that go in order. So it's a connection between um, two objects or events. Well, a correlation, yeah, sometimes that is the first step to an expanding causation, like what actually happened but it doesn't actually mean causation. Just because it happened first doesn't mean that's what caused the other thing to happen. Again, causation is a connection between two events in which it is established that one event actually caused the other. So causation means, yeah, this actually caused that. I cut myself, I'm bleeding. It is evident these two things are alike, okay? But if I were to say I'm unlucky because I picked up the wrong penny and then I cut myself and I bled. And the reason why I cut myself is because I picked up the wrong penny. That's two completely different. You know, it is a correlation, not a causation. OK, so an example of this is superstition. OK, superstition is a huge uh, faulty analogy. OK, so. Um, I'm sorry, I'm faulty now. Uh, post hoc ergo propter hoc, my bad. So superstition is a post hoc ergo propter hoc type of analogy of why, an explanation of why things happen. So find a penny right side up, all good day, you'll have good luck. I'm not gonna lie, I still can't pick up a penny if it's face down. I admit that. I do not know why, I think I got into the habit. You know, I've always done it that way. That's another fallacy we're gonna talk about. Okay, lucky or cursed creates a way of acting that then creates the superstitions to come true. If you feel like you're lucky and you found that lucky penny, you just kind of do things that lead to that next, you know, success. Versus you find that lucky penny, now you have this terrible mindset and everything's wrong after that, right? It really does make a difference, your mindset on stuff. So a lot of times we use this post, post hoc ergo propter hoc uh, to blame people. So a politician would say, I didn't get us into this mess, um, even though, you know, I didn't get us into this mess, but yet they're the same person who would be taking credit for, you know, something good like, you know, I'm the reason the economy is so great, even though they've only been in office for two or three weeks or whatever, right? So they're, they're using that, uh, that analogy, that post hoc ergo propter hoc to kind of give a blame or even to take credit. Okay, so blaming is an ad hoc fallacy and it usually creates more issues. Um, and the, the problem is it ignores the actual issue at hand and it creates just a lot more complicated factors. And you, then you never get to the point of the situation. So say you come in as a president and, you know, I didn't get us into this mess. 
Well, whether or not you got yourself into the mess doesn't matter. It's important that you say, all right, I'm here now. What's the issue? How do we address it? Rather than blaming whoever was ahead of you. Um, or say you, you received a great economy. It's important to know how did you, how did it get there? How can you keep it going? Okay. So again, post hoc ergo propter hoc. So the, the post hoc part of this is called, is a false cause. All right. This is where we shift blame. And the reason our team lost was because we weren't playing at home. Kind of a little superstition right there. Sports, it's all about your mind. And you'll see that that is a big part. Like a lot of superstitions uh, are in sports uh, because it is a mindset thing. You know, it's very important to have the right mindset. And sometimes superstitions fall into that. Um, or we have the, I failed the class because the teacher hated me. I have passed a lot of students that I've hated. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Uh, but you know what I mean? So like it's, I would, I would highly doubt that a teacher would fail you because they hated you. Absolutely. I can't fathom that. If ever you have that issue with a, a teacher, please reach out to me and talk to me and we can make sure that that gets addressed. But that is not a thing that usually happens. Okay. That would be again, a false now analogy. Just because you failed the class, you can't assume that it was that the teacher hated you. Question would be, did you turn in the homework? <laughs> did you do the things you were supposed to be doing? That's my question. Okay. So, um, another example would be, I saw how you put your television set in the, uh, in the car. Uh, and this, so this is the repairman telling the guy, like, I saw you put the television in your car. And the reason it doesn't work is that you poorly placed it in your car, uh, after you left the repair shop. It wasn't me. It was you. Okay. And I ate three pieces of pie at Joanne's house because I didn't want to hurt her mother's feelings. Brought not nah, you ate the three because <laughs> you just wanted to. Now you got a tummy ache and you feel sick. Okay. Okay. And then I can't find my soccer ball because a large green and brown monster came in and ate it while I was sleeping. Does that sound familiar? I'm not saying you've made that excuse, but if you have kids, I am sure you've probably heard them make those excuses. Okay. Kids are really good at, at uh, being imaginative. Okay. So again, post hoc, ergo, propter hoc, false cause. Sometimes we do it. Uh, sometimes we just don't know the real cause of the problem. So the reason why people use this fallacy is because they don't really know the cause. They don't want to accept that maybe it just happened because it is, or maybe it is our fault and, or maybe it's a problem we just don't want to deal with. Okay. So this is why this one analogy is, is, is so important to understand. So a lot of times we'll just give reasons for homelessness or other issues like, oh, he's homeless because he's a, you know, a drug addict and he's, you know, we can't help them. Well, that's a lie. I've known a lot of very, you know, a lot of addicts who were homeless who are now very successful and got sober, right? So um, this is kind of a, you know, giving a blame because you don't want to solve the issue or address it or understand there's more than just this black or white. Um, and a lot of times, this is why we believe in aliens. You know, sometimes things happen we're like, it's got to be aliens because aliens, all right? Um, and so this is another reason why people believe in superstitions and conspiracies. So you're going to see right now, probably out there, wild conspiracies. A lot of them, and if you look at... <laughs> If you look at these things and really kind of look into like the reality of some of these things, you actually have to go, brah, like it's one thing to maybe go, maybe, I don't know, could be. It's another thing to be like, this is so wildly out of like, you know, left field, this physically, you know, scientifically, logically doesn't make any sense. Well, the reason why people want to believe in these things is because they're looking for a reason to justify the world around them because it doesn't make sense to them. One, maybe they don't want to take responsibility for it. You know, two, maybe there's fears. There's a lot of things, but superstitions and conspiracies. The reason why we do this is because we want to blame someone or something for our situation rather than just saying sometimes shit happens. We go all oh, this and that, and it's this person and it's that thing. And that's where these things come from. And that's why, especially with the pandemic and people being at home and, and looking for anything to grasp, that's why these things get so big. Okay. We just need a, a reason. Okay. And then fear of being found out. So we like to blame other people because it's like, wouldn't me, I didn't do it. Wouldn't me. It was him. All right. Uh, again, and a lot of times poli uh, politicians, of course, totally, absolutely use this because they don't want to admit to their shortcomings or their inability as a politician. Okay. All right. So take a minute. All right. You can pause me uh, and, and do this for yourself as a really good practice to try and figure out someone you know who's used that, even yourself. What, what are times that someone has made either a claim, 
um, or they've tried to blame somebody or use a superstition to explain it, okay? I have used superstitions so many times to explain why something didn't happen, right? Because that was my habit. I'm getting better at understanding like, whoa, <laughs> that's not a thing. Picking up that penny doesn't make my day better and doesn't make it worse. And it's actually kind of scary to think that a penny would totally change my entire universe. So that being said, <laughs> all right, we think about ways in which maybe you know someone, you've heard it, you see it who's doing this and just kind of make a note of it so that you kind of see where you're finding these particular behaviors or uh, uses of these fallacies. Okay, now we're on to slippery slope. And a slippery slope, mm -hmm. a slippery slope suggests that if an action is taken, it will be the first step in a continuous path towards an inevitable bad end, okay? I'm going to show you an example, and I see this all the time, and it's always kind of shocking. I'm like, how did you go from here all the way to there? Like, how are, how would you even get there? Okay. So if you let them turn in one late paper, here's an example, uh, they'll never learn any discipline, and then they'll end up, you know, never being able to hold down a job. Okay. So for me, the reason why I don't allow late paper is because, guys, it's like one person, then another, before I know it, I'm not getting anything in, and it's hard for me to grade, so I try and keep it consistent. Okay, sometimes things happen, I get it, we talk it out, whatever. But I don't assume that because you're turning in late paper, you're never going to hold down a job. If you can't do your homework and, you know, you're having a hard time, maybe it's something beyond, you know, that. But it doesn't mean you're never going to be holding down a job, you know. That's, that goes way beyond <laughs> just a late paper. So it's good to keep good habits. Maybe, maybe something like, I don't know, I can't, I can't see how those two correlate necessarily it seems a bit extreme here's another part of extremism that we see when it comes to the uh, this particular fallacy of the slippery slope okay so a lot of times and I do not know why this is but you'll see a lot of people who are not minorities or uh, of a certain situation they really push against the rights of certain people uh, and it's which is weird because in the end this the, these rights that we are allowing for other people or whatever actually never really affects the people who are so against it it's kind of shocking you know the people who are like no they shouldn't have rights or they can't do this or they can't do that are incredibly angry over something that will never affect them physically will probably never affect them maybe not even financially it's it's one of those things that always cracks me up I'm gonna show you a few examples here in our little comic stream so one of them is just watch now that black people can marry white people marrying house pets is just around the corner these are arguments that are actually people make how how are people of human beings of different races how are them marrying leading to <laughs> bestiality like how does that even come close right so it's this extreme you know statement that's like oh I just can't allow it why well because this is gonna happen how how is it even gonna get that far there's no correlation that is just really jumping to extremes okay so now that abortion is legal we're certain to make it legal to commit infant side ah <laughs> again two totally different things and again majority of the people who are against abortion will probably never have to face abortion in their life nor do they or will they right so again it's not a decision uh it's not it's not a, a right or a freedom that someone you know in granting these people it ultimately will usually not affect the person who's arguing against it you know and then they would still get the choice if they want to or not so that's kind of where i always go how does it affect you well, infant side, how does that, how does it go that far? <laughs> okay. So now our other one is if gays can marry legal incest and bigamy will become next. 